at you four and one. Hey, God, so happy for everyone that's here. Brother Jerry, I'm glad you're here, even though Sister Nanette's not able to be here. That's great. I'm glad you came on to church. Hey, God. But um, Matthew chapter 4, verse number 1. Then was Jesus led of the Spirit uh, into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. But I like kind of the way that Mark says it's basically the same thing, but he just says it a little more, a little different in Mark 1 and 12. And immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. Thank God. The wilderness experience was to be an important part of getting Jesus prepared for his ministry. It was a, it was a, a must. Thank God. It was there that Jesus was tempted in all points like as we were and yet without sin so that he could become the example of what flesh led of the Spirit, flesh under control could do against the enemy. And so he became our wonderful example. And then Luke went on to say in verse chapter 4 and verse number 13, kind of the continuation of this, and when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all the regions round about. Thank God. I want to preach from this thought this morning. What's driving you? What's driving you? Let's just ask God to help us. God, we pray for you to make a difference in this place today. Touch our ears, touch our hearts. God, and most of all, touch us with uh, a desire that is above any desire we've had and give us fresh anointing. We thank you for it today. In Jesus' name, God bless you. You may be seated. And God, I feel, again, today is so important in the history of the church because this come... Um, uh, commitment offering is being taken just as a, a way of just expressing our desire. And I really believe that the harvest we have this year is going to be directly connected with how we sacrifice. Jesus was driven of the Spirit into the wilderness, but he returned with the power. And, uh, you know, today what we're doing in all of this, even when we think of the offering, when we think of worship, when we think of other things that we can give to God, is we're just digging ditches, we're just barring vessels, we're just smiting the ground. We all want the power, but we don't like the wilderness. But I'm telling you, no wilderness, no power. Somewhere there has to be that coming aside and really connecting with him. And so when you look at our example and how he overcame the devil, we can learn a lot. Now, he was God manifest in the flesh, but he didn't try to overcome him as the, the son of God. He didn't try to overcome him as God manifest in the flesh, but he came to overcome him as a man that was led by the spirit. And so when Jesus encountered the enemy, he encountered him the same way that you and I are to encounter him. Thank God, not as though he was God, but as though that he was just a man. And so when the temptation came, he answered him every time the same way. It is written. He wanted us to know that, hey, there is power in this word. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard. And so his word is very useful always. So if you will get the word of God in your heart, you'll be able to, um, it equips you to be able to have victory over the devil, to be able to overcome. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And the last temptation the, the devil came with was to try to get Jesus to make a deal with him. You know, when the devil can't get you any other way, he just tries to get you to make a deal. Well, just don't go so far. Just don't do so much. Okay, you're going to do, but don't do so much. Don't go so far. Um, you don't really have to do that much. You don't really have to separate that far from the world. You really don't have to get that far away from the world. Whatever it is, he's always trying to make a deal with you. And again, he promised to give Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. And so once again, Jesus uses a word. And Jesus in Mark chapter 4 and verse number 10 said, Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou worship. Thank God. If you will resist the devil, thank God, and you will let God break the chains that have you bound, and you will recognize that you can overcome Satan. And matter of fact, Mac, you can get to a place where the, the devil can't even go. Matter of fact, that's what was happening around here a few minutes ago. When you start worshiping the Lord, you're getting to a place where the, the devil can't go. He can't go into your worship. He can't because he can't worship. Hey, God, it makes him angry when we start worshiping the Lord. And so after 
Jesus overcame. Verse number 11 says, Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. And after you have overcome, there's always the victory celebration. There is always that something about coming in the presence of the Lord and beginning to worship him, that suddenly you just feel that strength that only comes through worship. With joy shall we draw water out of the well of salvation, and you get strength when we begin to Worship the Lord. And so worship is so important in your walk with God because worship is that place where Satan can't go. That's why, like, Brother Brian encouraged us today is that, hey, if we'll just kind of get a, forget about everything, Mondays and whatever else is on your mind, and just start worshiping the Lord, it is just amazing how that suddenly nothing seems too hard. But what I want to preach about today is not about worship, but it's about what's driving you. And God, where is your passion? Because Jesus said, I come to serve and not to be served. I don't want to ever see the church as, a, as serving me. I want to see the church as a place where that I can go and serve him. Because really, um, it's more than what I can get out of the church. It's what I can give to the kingdom. And really, the kingdom of God is where that we are to be investing ourselves. Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. Or I must be about the what the Spirit is wanting me to do. Jesus was consumed with seeking and saving that which was lost. Jesus, um, you know, the Bible said that uh, the zeal of his father's house had eaten him up. And so the question is, is what's driving you? The Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit, they're the sons of God. So I want us to just tap into what the Spirit is saying. I want us to be able to today to be able and tonight, I believe that the Spirit will will talk to us about uh, sacrifice and about what I can give to the kingdom of God. And I, I want to ask you to just do as I have asked you to just pray and say, God, whatever you would have me to do. Thank God, because um, the, the ministry is for whatever we do is for outside these four walls is to help the kingdom of God. And of course, the offering is one thing that you can give, but there's something else that you have that is really more precious than your pocketbook, and that is your time. Thank God. So God wants you to give us some of that to uh, him, some of your time to him, consecrate time to him. He, he wants you to spend time in prayer. He wants you to spend time in the, the work of God when it's all said and done. All that really is going to matter is, is what is, is driving you. Thank God. What to, what's to get, what gets you excited? What uh, do you spend your time doing? Is God more important than your job? Is God more important than your hobby? I know people that wouldn't think of missing work, but uh, they sometimes don't have a problem missing church. But I'm telling you, if you're able to go to work, you should be able to go to church. That's the way I believe it. I really think that God expects that out of us. When, all, when it's all said and done, what God is looking for is fruit. When, when you weigh it all out and when you just say, okay, how do I look God? What God is looking for is fruit. It's like the fig tree when Jesus saw that fig tree and he said, I want to go get some fruit off of that tree because what happened there was the tree was giving false advertisement because I, I never did think about this very much, but the truth is, is that the first thing that happens on a, a fruit-bearing tree is it gives out a bloom, or, and then after the bloom, the fruit is set, and then after the fruit is set, the leaves start coming. Think that's on peaches or pears or apples or, and figs, you know? And um, so when Jesus saw those leaves, it said, hey, I've got fruit because uh, I've got leaves, and therefore I should have a fruit because I've had a bloom or whatever a fig does. I don't know if fig tree blooms or what to make its fruit, but whatever happens there. But the truth is, is that when Jesus got there, he saw nothing but leaves. And so he was, he cursed the tree because it's kind of like if we're not careful, we, we were concerned about how we look. But the truth is, God is concerned about how is your fruit? Do you have any fruit? Thank God. And so Sunday night is how we show how we look. Thank God. But Monday morning is where that we say, where's the fruit? Thank God. Because that is where that God sends us out to be a, a part of his purpose. And his purpose is that we can go seek and to save that which is lost. And so if we are not producing, we are not profitable servants. Matter of fact, in another uh, example, Jesus uh, or the master of the uh, field, the um, 
orchard came and saw a tree that hadn't produced in several years. He said, hey, well, let's cut this tree down because no, no fruit. What's the use for it to be here? And of course, the keeper said, Lord, give me one more year. And thank God for pastors, you know, that, that pray over you and, and try to keep the Lord from just um, being too hard on you and just saying, but give us another year so that we can just see if we can make it bring forth. But there's, there's something about, you know, um, being productive in the kingdom of God. If you can hear what the Spirit is saying. Thank God. How do you produce? It's by hearing what the Spirit is saying. I have never um, been in a situation where that God spoke to me and said, hey, this is what you need to do. This is where you need to go. This is how you need to approach it. Just like this offering, all of that. I feel like God gave me that. And so, you know, I have just confidence that it's going to be okay. Whatever, it's going to be okay. Because when you hear what the Spirit is saying, there's something about hearing what the Spirit is saying. Thank God. It gives you fresh energy. It gives you kind of that uh, excitement about what's going on around you. So much of what God wants us to do has to be um, birthed in prayer and in fasting and just um, hearing a fresh word from the Lord. There is nothing like just something fresh from the Lord. Thank God. Seven times in the book of Revelations in chapter 2 and chapter 3, we find these words, uh, he that hath ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. And when uh, you hear what the Spirit is saying, there are many benefits that come from just hearing what the Spirit is saying. It, it went on to say, you will be able to eat of the tree of life. You will not be hurt of the second death. You will get to eat the hidden manna and, and get be given a new name. He will give you power over the nations. He And him that overcometh will he make a pillar in the temple of God. So if you will hear what the Spirit is saying, there's just so abundant things that God is going to do. So it's clear that God is speaking. Thank God. He wants to us to do greater things for him. He wants the church to have greater revival, greater harvest. But you've got to hear what the Spirit is saying. It's clear to me that the, the Spirit is trying to help us to really take a fresh inventory of our lives and just to reinvest ourselves in the kingdom of God uh, with a new energy and so to, to just make sure that the main thing is still the main thing in your life. I am so thankful that several of the ministry team is going to get to go to because of the times this week, and it is going to be, I know, a time of energizing all of us, and so I'm very thankful for everyone that's made that commitment, and then I'm certainly looking forward to next Monday leadership because I'm telling you, I, I believe every leader in this church, I'm praying for you, I'm believing that God is going to re-inspire you, re-inspire you, re-anoint you, uh, refresh you so that we're going to have a, a tremendous year for every department in the church. And so when uh, the truth is we have become, uh, if we're not careful, sometimes we all um, making investments of our time. And so you only have so much time. And sometimes if we're not careful, we blame the time we have in the work of God because we just have so little time. But when you really uh, take an inventory of all of that and you really look at how, what it is, many times we've just got so entangled with the cares of life and the things of life that it's hard to find that place. But I'm telling you, the best thing that you can do is to um, just pray that God will uh, not only touch us, but that he will refire us. Thank God that we can get fresh fire because no burden, no fire. Great burden, great fire. And so we cannot afford to be content to just stay status quo and just to try to get by somewhere. There's got to be something that says, hey, I'm going to do more for God. There is a place in the spirit that we can run and not be weary. We can walk and not faint. And so I'm looking for that fresh anointing, that fresh energy to have the supernatural because there is a supernatural move of God that we got, we've got to be driven by the, the Spirit and not by our flesh. We've got to recognize that, hey, this flesh is not going to get the job done. We need the supernatural. It's so easy to miss what the supernatural power and energy that God has for us because we can just miss it because so many times it's just him speaking to us in that still small voice. God never intended for us to do his work in the strength of our flesh. He's always wanted us to know that there is spiritual anointing. Thank God there's divine energy. There's divine strength. There's divine power to do the work of God. There are two ways that you can hear from God. You know, one is by the preaching and the studying of God's word and 
and God just speaking to our hearts, but the other is by hearing what the Spirit is saying, and God just speaking things into your heart. And the Spirit can speak to us in so many ways. It has a way of just touching us. And one of the main ways that he speaks to us is like he spoke to Elijah with that little still, small inner voice that just says, this is the way, and walk in it, and God uh, because, you know, Burger King didn't get it right when it said, have it your way. Thank God, I've tried that. Thank God, and I like it letting him have his way a whole lot better than me having my way. It just works out a whole lot better. And if you will wake up, thank God, and hear what the Spirit is saying, this will be the greatest year of the church. This will be the greatest hour of the church. You know, Elijah felt uh, he was the only one. He got all down in the dumps and depressed and all of those things. But when it was all said and done, God uh, sent a, an angel to minister to him because God understands our humanity. And I believe that here today, God is trying to come to some of you that says, man, Smith, you just don't understand how much I've been pressing and pushing. I just don't know how much more I can go, how much more I can do. I'm telling you, you know, the Lord understands that. And you're, you're not going through whatever you're going through without God noticing it and being aware of it. But I'm telling you, thank God, you are dealing with a mole hill, thank God, and God's got a mountain for you. Elijah was down in the dumps, and the Lord said, hey, thank God, you need to get out of the mullet grubs. I want you to come to the mountain. And I think God's trying to call some of us to the mountain. Thank God, you've been in the wilderness long enough. It's time to go to the mountain. It's time to say, I need a fresh touch. I need fresh anointing. Thank God, look, God knows when enough is enough. God knows when your burden is more than you can bear. And somewhere you just have to relax with faith that, God, you will not put more in the air. He knows when our, our burden gets us down. He knows when disappointments is all around. Hey, God, you know, it's amazing how that oh, when God begins to bring the church together in unity, the devil tries to do everything he can to distract us from the, the good, thank God, and try to get us focused on the few things that aren't good. But I'm telling you, it's so much good that God is doing that I'm not about to let my eyes get on something that's not good, something that is disharmonizing because God is wanting to harmonize us. He wants to bring us together. Thank God. He knows when life caves in on us. He knows uh, when brooks dry up. Thank God. But he's always got another way. And the old song is still works for me today. I thank God for the mountains. I thank God for the valleys. I thank him for the storms he brought me through, or I've never had a problem that he couldn't solve. I've never had a, a where that uh, it just showed me what faith in God could do. So through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. I've learned to depend upon his word. I am so thankful because we have, you know, his word and we have his name. Thank God. And we have his blood. And there is nothing that can come against you if you get yourself in the word, get yourself calling on the name, get under the blood. God can take you through whatever you're having to go through. And so I am thankful that God has saw us through so many storms. Thank God. And so he's more than enough today. Thank God. I know he's more than enough. When you look to do um, at the things that God says that his voice is speaking into us today and is saying, thank God, this is the way and walk you in it. Thank God, it's not time to quit. It's not time to give up. It's time to or the Spirit of God to get in the driver's seat. And so what drove Jesus into that wilderness seemed to be the last place that you would want to be. But the truth of the matter is, is when he came out of that wilderness, the Bible says he came out in the power of the Spirit. Thank God there is power that you get when you go through some things. And so it's time to be driven to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. It's time to be driven because ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You're going to be witnesses. It's time to just uh, be driven of the Spirit that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And it's time to hear these signs shall follow them that believe. If we will hear what the Spirit is saying, and that God is fixing to give us a double portion of what the book of Acts church had. That is really God's will in this last day that the last church, the latter house will be greater than the former house, that he wants to give us the Elisha portion of Elijah's blessing. Elisha said, I want a double portion. I believe God wants this end time church to have a double portion of the book of Acts church. And God is ready to give us more. 
Thank God. I don't know about you, thank God, but I, I need, thank God, a double portion of God's love. I need a double portion of God's grace, and I need a double portion of what only God can do in my life. Let's just stand. Thank God. God is speaking. He is saying, get up, church. Thank God. There's still mighty revival to be had. There's still greater things than these that you're going to do. Thank God. If he could take four leopards and defeat an army, thank God. Think what God can do with his church. If we would just understand that it's his pleasure to give us the kingdom, thank God. It's his will that, thank God, the church turned this city upside down. And so he doesn't want us to be content with all the blessings because I'm telling you what an amazing story of blessings that I have to tell of all the blessings of God upon my life. But I'm telling you, that's not where he wants me to get content. He wants me to understand he hasn't blessed me to just bless me. He's blessed me so that I can bless others. And so it's time to hear that still small voice, thank God, that's speaking to us. And if you um, understood how much God wants to enter into your situation and give you supernatural help and give you supernatural direction. Thank God you would be crying out, God, here I am. I surrender all. I want to enter into what you have prepared. I'm try tired of trying to do it on my own strength. I want that divine strength to come. It's time to get the spirit in the driver's seat. Thank God. So what better time than now? Thank God. What better day than today? Because God is ready to guide us. He's ready to drive us into a fresh place of power and victory. But somewhere, you just got to take that step of faith. Somewhere you got to say, I want it. Thank God. I'm willing. I'm ready to pay the price and just listen and hear what the voice is saying. We've talked a lot about trying to just pray and ask God what he wants you to do in giving. But I'm telling you, there's a, a greater prayer than that that you can pray. And that is the prayer of God. What do you, what would you have me to do? Thank God. What type of fast do you want me to go on? What type of prayer life do you want me to get into? What type of soul winning do you want me to do? Where is that place? And I find that anointing and I find that ministry that you really would have me to do because God didn't save you to just sit on this pew. He saved you to minister back into the kingdom. Every one of you need to be involved in ministry and doing something for God and feeling like that I have purpose. Praise God. So while we sing a chorus, I think it's consecration time. I think it's time to just reach out and say, God, I'm ready. Thank God. Wherever you want to drive me, if it's in the wilderness, if you're ready for me to come out of the wilderness, maybe you've been in the wilderness, it's time to come on out in the power of the Spirit.